Good morning. Uh, 1.44 a.m. And it is the uh, 12th of uh, January. And I uh, tried to sleep early tonight so that I could get up and listen to the uh, to the three-hour program that starts at 9 o'clock with the National Liberty Alliance. But I didn't wake up till going on <laughs> going on midnight. I slept right through most of the program. I didn't even try to put it on at the end. I, I went said after midnight I went to the gym and exercised for a while. It my gave my hour of exercise. Anyway, the title for today is Law Unrebutted Affidavits Determine Truth. And my blurb goes like this Maxims of Law and then I list in commerce, truth is sovereign. Truth is expressed in the form of an affidavit. An unrebutted affidavit stands as truth in commerce. An unrebutted affidavit becomes the final judgment in commerce. All matters must be expressed to be resolved. He who leaves the battle first loses by default. A lien or claim can be satisfied only through rebuttal by affidavit point by point for point. Commercial processes and responses are non-judicial and prejudicial. No judge, court, government, or agencies thereof, or any other third parties whatsoever can abrogate anyone's affidavit of truth. Only a party affected by an affidavit can speak for him or herself and is solely responsible for responding with his or her own affidavit of truth, which no one else can do for him or her. Now, that's the end of the of the maxims of law that I included. Now, I actually am going to put, I have a link at the bottom of, of this blurb, which expands even more on the maxims of law than what I included in not only the document that I filed with the court, I did that in several documents. To let them know what the law is. Anyway, please note that Bonnie J. Berry, a party unknown in this case, filed an affidavit in a private attorney's newspaper called The Eagle on January 26th and February the 2nd, 2012. Thereafter, on February 15th, 2012, they held a sheriff's sale in which the alleged plaintiff bought my home for $100. No other bids were allowed. It was 100% fraud created to deceive and steal. And again, I include the link to Maxims of Law for those of you that want to see for yourself. In any case, uh, I had a commenter on yesterday's video say, You blew it, Ron. You didn't get it in writing. Well, I did get it in writing. My writing, the affidavit of truth. That I filed right when it happened. I went through everything that I was told and I put it in an affidavit. And it was not rebutted within 30 days or ever. They never rebutted it. They've never rebutted affidavits point by point with anybody taking responsibility for what they're saying. Again, the one that they put in, and, and, and it was put in, claimed to be put in by the Wilhelm. But it wasn't. It was put in by the bank's attorney. Uh, and I have, what, I have her, uh, Kimberly Rizanka. I almost said the other attorney from the, that, that became the new attorney in 2014. Uh, but Kimberly Rizanka was the one that did all that, I'm fairly certain. Uh, her name is the first one on the ones because she wanted to drive it home, drive it home, even though she was the one that made the agreement with me that if I let them have power of attorney to sell the Merritt Island property, they would leave me alone on my house. She lied. Liars and lawyers are almost synonymous terms with rare exception. Lawyers are paid by the banks. And supported by the courts to deceive, to cajole, to threaten, to try to get people to toe the line and do what the 
powers that be that want to control the world want them to do. It's a con game, folks. It's a con game. And it's not, I didn't make up the rules about affidavits. That's why I've used affidavits time and time again. And they do not, as I said, get rebutted. And when they, the lawyers, present an affidavit, they have some unknown party that isn't even privy to the case, that's never been heard of by any anybody else in the case, or at least not by me. Uh, they let them write an affidavit. They don't take responsibility for it themselves. Do you hear me? Do you hear me, uh, Kimberly? And I'm going to go after these people with criminal charges because what they're doing is criminal in nature. They are trying to steal that which does not belong to them. This property, as I've said before, was purchased with proceeds from the Mary Horgan Trust. And those proceeds would have been paid back if the court or the Wilhelms filing their lawsuit had not prevented me from fulfilling the, the contract with the bank that later became the PNC Bank. Folks, you've got to understand that there are always remedies within the law, but they don't allow the courts, most of the judges, most of the courts don't allow it because they're paid by the banks to not keep the law. They're paid criminals by far and large. Some of them may be doing it ignorantly because they simply have been educated incorrectly. They have not been told the truth. I find that hard to believe to any judge that's been around for a long time and has done his homework or her homework. But many of the younger ones especially probably really don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know how how much they, they get, but I do know that I've been working with a particular retired attorney and she didn't she doesn't know about common law. She says, I, I know nothing about what you're calling common law. Well, that's because they've taken admiralty law and they call it common law. That becomes the commonly used law. But it's admiralty law. It's the law of the sea. It's not the law of the land. It's not the law that guarantees and upholds people's rights. In fact, it's the law that strips people of their rights. And it changes in jur various jurisdictions. They modify it and codify and, and mess with the law so that it becomes odious and it becomes uh, a weight on people's shoulders. It, it's too much for people to get because it e it's even self-contradictory. Because you can find many things that support whatever you want to support. That's how convoluted the admiralty law system is. The maritime law system is a convoluted law system. It's made up as people go along, whatever they need to make. They put a law in to say, see, this is what the law says. But it's not law. Any law or any ruling or any so-called law that violates the Constitution, the original Constitution violates the Bill of Rights and takes people's rights away, like a trial by jury, it's null and void on its face, as if it never existed. Now that's the law. That's real law. And it's the remedy that people have to use, and the courts have to be forced to use it, or the judges need to go to jail. They need to be put in a, some kind of a penitentiary where they can repent for the crimes that they've committed against so many people across the United States and around the world. These are criminals that have been operating our governments, and we need to recognize that, and by the grace of God, we need to put an end to it. And there are people working on it. There are people doing the best they can to try to facilitate that. And I hope it uh, happens this year. Thank you very much for listening. And, uh